Chu Mian was thrown onto an island full of mental patients by her father, but for her, it was a kind of liberation. Her father always forced her to take all sorts of strange medicines, and when she turned 18, she was forcibly engaged to an old man. Desperately resisting, she wounded the nearly 60-year-old man with a fruit knife. After that, she was sent to the desolate island, inhabited by mental patients and criminals, to fend for herself. Driven by her desire for revenge, she had lived there for three years. One day, a helicopter suddenly arrived above the desolate island, causing everyone to flee in panic. However, Chu Mian remained indifferent, sitting coldly under a tree. A group of men in suits disembarked from the helicopter, and Chu Mian's unusual behavior caught the curiosity of the leader among them. Is she also mentally ill? Immediately, Chu Mian's hand was grabbed, revealing the electronic bracelet on her wrist, which contained information about each person sent to the island. Yes, Mr. Lee, she was sent here three years ago. She's 21 years old this year and diagnosed with schizophrenia. The man repeated the number 21 contemptuously. This kind of woman who should have been on this desolate island since birth, yet she was only discovered and sent here at 18. Chu Mian kept her head down, pretending to have a problem with her brain. The man squatted down in front of her and suddenly pinched her cheek. Chu Mian flinched in pain, but she didn't resist much. Having spent too long on the island, she had long become emotionally numb, with all her emotions hidden inside. Li Tian Kei patted her face and stood up. She's the one. Take her back. Then he took a towel to wipe his hands. However, this seemingly imposing and domineering CEO possesses an unknown dual personality. In public, he is a commanding and authoritative leader, but at home, he transforms into an affectionate little puppy who loved to call his sister. Ever since being taken off the deserted island, Chu Mian had been confined to a mansion called Rose Garden, with maids taking care of her. In order to seek revenge, she had to continue pretending to have mental issues. Through the conversations among the maids, Chu Mian learned some details about Mr. Lee, but she didn't know his intentions for bringing her back. Until the sudden arrival of Li Tian Kei, she instinctively picked up a small knife from the table to protect herself. Expecting him to mistreat her like her father had, she was surprised when he gently tended to her injured hand and murmured, You look so much like her. It dawned on Chu Mian that she had become a replacement for someone else. Li Tian Kei patted her head and said, Remember, from today onwards, you belong to me. Then he started undressing. As she watched his muscular physique, she became nervous. Silently mocking herself, she thought, Isn't it perverse to undress in front of someone with mental issues? Please don't undress anymore. It seemed like Li Tian Kei sensed her inner helplessness. He turned towards the bathroom and closed the door behind him. The moment he disappeared into the bathroom, Chu Mian quickly stood up from the sofa, feeling that she should seize the opportunity to escape. She walked to the window and glanced outside, seeing several bodyguards still standing in the courtyard. When Li Tian Kei came out of the bathroom and saw her standing by the window, he pulled her into his arms. Are you trying to escape? He chuckled coldly. Then he grabbed Chu Mian's wrist and forcefully threw her onto the bed. As Chu Mian watched the man approaching her, she seized the opportunity and slapped him. However, he caught her wrist and then handed her a dry towel. Sister, can you dry my hair for me? Pay attention, I'll only teach you once, Li Tian Kei said. Chu Mian was surprised to find that this mighty CEO was so clingy behind the scenes. Li Tian Kei pushed Chu Mian onto the bed, but he only wanted to use her arm as a pillow. Not only did he lay his leg directly over her body, but he also complained about his father being a jerk. Perhaps thinking she was a fool, he showed his vulnerability to her. However, he didn't know that Chu Mian was just pretending to be a fool. Suddenly, he got up, about to release the girl from his embrace. However, as he looked down, he caught a glimpse of her exposed skin, and his body quickly reacted. He hurriedly left the room to calm down. Chu Mian rubbed her nose, got off the bed quietly, and followed him out. Li Tian Kei put on his suit and then turned to his assistant, Meng Xu. Find me a woman, he said. Meng Xu was taken aback. Ah, uh, what kind of woman? Li Tian Kei gave him a look as if he were an idiot. 
an adult, a willing one. Soon, two maids arrived, but they were only there to monitor Chu Mian. After Li Tianke Kei left, Chu Mian also wanted to find a chance to escape. She bounced around the room like a fool, gradually lulling the vigilance of the two maids. However, one of the maids still followed her closely. Chu Mian took advantage of the maid's distraction to steal some sleeping pills. Then, she waved her arms and ran into the kitchen, putting the pills into the water bottle. An hour later, the maids fell asleep, and Chu Mian walked out of the room and left the garden. She soon arrived at the Chu family's mansion, where her nightmare had begun. Her foster father had dumped her on a deserted island like garbage. Now that she was back, it was time for them to pay the price. She climbed over the wall into the yard and then entered her old room from the balcony. Unexpectedly, her room had been turned into a kennel. She pressed lightly on the wall with her fingers, and a brick suddenly popped out. Inside were some money she had saved and a button that had been left in the swaddle when she was abandoned. She hugged the wooden box to her chest, a sly gleam passing through her eyes. It wasn't easy to come back, so she had to leave a little gift for them to remember her by. As night fell, Chu's biological daughter, Chu Xing, returned home. Despite having a boyfriend, she still wanted to get close to the wealthy tycoon Li Tian Kei. Her mother, Fang Shui, kindly reminded her that it wasn't right, but Chu Xing just glared at her. She then went upstairs, but as she opened the door to her room, she screamed in fear and collapsed on the floor, trembling hand pointing to the dressing table. The mirror, covered in mist, had the words, I'm back, written on it. Fang Shui immediately thought of Chu Mian, as this used to be her room. Upon mentioning Chu Mian, Chu Xing's fear vanished. After all, it had been three years, she should have died on the deserted island long ago. Her father, Chu Jingming, snorted disdainfully, she's useless whether alive or dead. Even in death, she only dares to do such petty things. There's no need to fear her. Chu Xing suggested to her father that they should find a Taoist master to perform a ritual and trap that despicable person's soul in hell. Fang Shui frowned upon hearing this, but Chu Xingming agreed. Chu Xing's eyes gleamed with satisfaction. Chu Mian, whether you're alive or dead, you can only be suppressed by me. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Chu Mian was eating skewers by the street when a silver-haired man approached her. Taking off her disposable gloves, Chu Mian replied indifferently, I'm not interested in you. The man placed a hand on her shoulder, expressing his desire to get to know her better. Chu Mian glanced at his hand on her shoulder, then swiftly grabbed his wrist, pressing it forcefully onto the table. She picked up a bamboo skewer and stabbed it into his hand. The man screamed in pain, please let me go. I'll agree to any request you have. Chu Mian withdrew the bamboo skewer, reminded of how her father had abandoned her on the deserted island, and how her household registration had long been cancelled. Now, the only thing that could prove her identity was her high school graduation certificate. Since the man could help her obtain fake documents, she decided to have him make an ID for her. She chose the name Xia Xiangla and provided arbitrary information for the rest of the details. Just then, the television outside the barbecue stand caught her attention. It was broadcasting news about Chu Xing's charity work. Despite being seen as kind-hearted by the public, Chu Xing's true nature was cunning and ugly. Chu Mian couldn't help but sneer. As she was about to leave, Chu Mian noticed Li Tian Kei arriving with a woman to eat barbecue, while the bodyguards were starting to clear the area. Knowing that she had previously pretended to be dumb in front of him and had now sneaked out again, she quickly grabbed a hat and apron from the barbecue stand and put them on to disguise herself. She lowered her head and walked along with the crowd being cleared out, but Li Tiang's assistant, Meng Xu, mistook her for a vendor and asked her if she was done yet. Feeling bewildered, Chu Mian glanced down and saw the words, Northern Barbecue, on the chest of her clothes. With no other choice, she turned around and walked back to the barbecue stand. To her misfortune, Li Tian Kei and the woman sat at the table in front of her stall, with the woman teasing Li Tiang's leg under the table. Suddenly, Meng Shu approached Chu Mian. Are you done yet? Serve some dishes first. Chu Mian, feeling speechless, placed some grilled meat onto a plate, then lowered her head and carried the plate out. She silently prayed in her heart, 
Please don't recognize me, please don't recognize me. Setting the plate down on the table, she began to retreat, but Li Tian Pei suddenly called out to her. His gaze fell on her, and he smiled faintly, evidently recognizing her, but he didn't want to expose her. At that moment, the woman in the red dress reached out to touch Li Tiang's cheek. He abruptly stood up and grabbed the woman's arm, lifting her skirt to reveal a gun holster strapped to her thigh. In an instant, Li Tian Kei disarmed her. The woman stumbled and fell to the ground, and Li Tian Kei fired a shot into the ground. Meng Shu was surprised to find out that the woman they had hired turned out to be an assassin. Merchants at the night market scattered in fear, but Chu Mian remained still. Her reaction caught Li Tiang's attention, and he pointed the gun at her forehead. You, the merchant, have quite the courage, he said in a low voice. Chu Mian lowered her voice and said, I know you're Mr. Li. With someone as great as you around, we'll definitely be safe. Li Tian Kei chuckled softly, then tossed the gun to Meng Shu. Let's go back to Rose Garden, he instructed. Realizing she had to get back to her room before Li Tian Kei arrived home, Chu Mian watched as his car pulled away, then seized the opportunity to slip into the trunk while no one was paying attention. However, Li Tian Kei had noticed everything and deliberately chose the car Chu Mian had hidden in. When Meng Shu asked Li Tian Kei about his preferences in women and if he needed another one, Li Tian Kei jokingly replied that he preferred someone simple minded. Chu Mian's eyes widened in shock. What kind of twisted hobby was this? Then, Li Tian Kei remarked, I find the woman at Rose Garden quite appealing. Chu Mian was stunned. Wasn't she supposed to be a replacement for his deceased sister? Even Meng Shu, sitting in the car, was taken aback by Li Tian's words. Li Tian Kei chuckled softly. Should I have a one night stand with her? Chu Mian curled up in the trunk, not daring to move. This man was truly deranged. She needed to be careful. Chu Mian calculated the time and quickly crawled out of the trunk, scaling the fence back to her room. However, Li Tian Kei saw everything. He deliberately chatted with the maids, giving Chu Mian enough time. When the time was right, he slowly pushed open Chu Mian's door. Chu Mian was lying quietly on the bed. Li Tian Kei walked over and pinched her nose. Unable to breathe, she opened her eyes. He smirked, if you're awake, get up and have dinner with me. Chu Mian continued to pretend to be mentally disabled. Suddenly, Li Tian Kei pulled her over, and the next moment she found herself hanging sideways on his shoulder as he carried her out. This man was truly sick, Chu Mian cursed him in her heart. Li Tian Kei sat across from her watching her with interest as she obediently sat there. But the next moment, she stuffed food into her mouth eagerly. So he likes fools, huh? Let's see how much you like it. Li Tian Kei continued to stare at her with amusement. So adorable. Chu Mian was so shocked that she spat out a mouthful of rice. The maid hurriedly came forward to change the utensils, but Li Tian Kei refused. Wiping his hands, he asked, what does she like to eat? The maid answered cautiously, Miss doesn't have any particular preferences. She eats whatever is served. Li Tian Kei raised an eyebrow. Doesn't she dislike barbecue? Chu Mian's heart skipped a beat. Why bring up barbecue all of a sudden? Did he recognize her from the night market? Li Tian Kei stood up from his chair and walked over to Chu Mian. He lifted her chin, leaning in close to her ear. Keep eating recklessly, and there will be serious consequences. Chu Mian was shocked. He must have recognized her. Meng Shu, who was nearby, hurriedly interjected, she doesn't understand. I'll make sure the servants pay attention. Li Tian Kei stood up and chuckled. You're right, how could a lunatic understand? Chu Mian felt this man was truly absurd, unable to understand whether he had recognized her or not. Li Tian Kei grabbed Chu Mian's hand and looked at the electronic bracelet on her wrist. He instructed his assistant Meng Su to modify the bracelet into a bracelet. Meng Shu found this CEO's request quite strange, but he didn't dare to question it. He only asked, will Mr. Li be resting here tonight? Upon hearing Li Tian's affirmative answer, Chu Mian felt panicked. 
Just as she was thinking about what to do next, Li Tian Kei suddenly answered a phone call and hurriedly left. Chu Mian watched his departing figure, feeling relieved. Who would have thought that a billionaire like him would also have troubles? Li Tiang's mother died in childbirth, and his father not only remarried her mother's best friend but also kicked out his 10-year-old sister and newborn Li Tian Kei. Listening to the maids recount his past, especially considering Li Tiang's childish behavior towards her, Chu Mian felt some sympathy for him. Meanwhile, at the Chu family home, suspecting that the deceased Chu Mian had returned to cause trouble, the family hired an exorcist to remove her soul. However, Chu Xing didn't know that her sister Chu Mian was actually alive. They would pay the price for their foolish actions. Chu Mian secretly installed surveillance cameras in the Chu family home. She chuckled as she watched their every move. The Chu family wholeheartedly believed in the occult, thinking that her ghost had returned. Chu Mian took out her phone and set up a fake electronic voice message. Then, she called all the media outlets, reporting that Congressman Chu Jingming was practicing malicious sorcery at home. Li Tian Kei arrived at his father's residence, only to find his father asking him for money to woo women. His expression darkened. If he dares to bring women home again, I won't hesitate to perform the castration surgery myself. At that moment, Meng Shu handed him some information about Chu Mian. Li Tian Kei was somewhat surprised. She's not an orphan. Meng Su quickly replied, that's right. She was sent to the deserted island by Chu Xingming through connections. Li Tiang's lips curled up. Interesting. Keep investigating. Meng Su continued to report, today's hot search is about the Chu family. They've set up a sorcery formation at home. He grabbed his phone. Chu Mian is mine now. Nobody can bully her. The night passed, and Chu Xing felt like she was going crazy. Looking at all the negative comments online about her family, she angrily threw her phone onto the bed and rushed downstairs. Dad, what's going on? Chu Xingming sat in the living room, pondering. Despite spending money to handle the situation, the news only seemed to get worse. He decided to have Chu Xing hold a press conference to clarify that she had been deceived by fake exorcists. Chu Xing was somewhat reluctant. Her current goal was to marry Li Tian Kei and enter the top tier elite circles. She didn't want to tarnish her reputation. Chu Jingming slammed his hand on the table. If you could get Li Tian Kei to help you, would I be worried? But does he even care about you now? Suddenly, Chu Jingming thought of something and asked, You haven't broken up with Feng Shenjun, have you? Of course not. He's also a decent backup plan. How could I easily let him go? Chu Jingming patted Chu Xing's shoulder. Then go and talk to him about this tonight. In the evening, at a restaurant in the mall, Feng Shenjun agreed to testify for Chu Xing at the press conference. Chu Xing pretended to be touched and hugged him, but her expression betrayed her disdain. Just then, she saw her supposedly deceased sister Chu Mian. She deliberately spilled coffee, splashing her boyfriend in an attempt to find Chu Mian. Suddenly, a hand was placed on her shoulder, and she instinctively turned around to see Chu Mian's approaching face. She screamed in fright, falling to the ground. When she realized what was happening, she said fiercely, you're not dead. Chu Mian pretended not to recognize her. Miss, I think you've mistaken me for someone else. She pointed to Chu Mian's wrist, still denying it. The electronic lock on your wrist is evidence. Chu Mian revealed her wrist, which only had a bracelet, thanks to Li Tian Kei having the electronic lock carved into a jade bangle. Coming out of the restroom, Feng Shenjun also froze in place upon seeing Chu Mian. When he snapped out of it, he grabbed her hand excitedly. Where have you been these past three years? I've been searching for you so desperately. Chu Mian pulled her hand back from his grasp and explained again, You've really mistaken me for someone else. Seeing Chu Mian's unwillingness to admit, Chu Xing secretly sent a message to her father. Then she grabbed Chu Mian's arm, suggesting they go for coffee. The three of them went to a coffee shop, where Chu Xing clung to Feng Shenjun's arm, pretending to be intimate to provoke Chu Mian. Chu Mian was speechless. She directly took out her identification. I think you two have really mistaken me for someone else. 
but Chu Xing still refused to believe. She reached out to snatch Chu Mian's identification, but Chu Mian immediately withdrew her hand and said guardedly, What are you doing? Chu Xing hurriedly explained, You look so much like my deceased sister. Feng Shenjun also stepped in to defuse the situation, handing out a business card. Sorry about that. My girlfriend is just a bit too excited. Chu Mian glanced at the card. I know her. She's a social media influencer. But didn't Chu Xing say she didn't have a boyfriend? Are you two playing separate games? Chu Xing glared at her in displeasure. What nonsense are you talking about? Chu Mian couldn't be bothered and was about to leave. Seeing her about to go, Chu Xing's eyes flashed with calculation. She immediately grabbed a cup of steaming hot coffee and threw it at Chu Mian. Chu Mian deftly lifted her hand, blocking the coffee, which splashed back onto Chu Xing scalded. Chu Xing jumped up on the spot, glaring angrily at Chu Mian. You're clearly Chu Mian.